Hello and welcome to MMA Fight Club. I'm your host, Manuel Galarza. Today's episode, we're going over the full breakdown, predictions and picks for PFL number 5, which is coming up on Thursday, the 17th of June. That's a 5.30 p.m. start time. That event's taking place in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and this will be their first event taking place in front of a crowd since COVID happened. We'll go through the prelims first. We'll work our way up through the main card, give you as much information as we can, and uh, hopefully help you get as many winning tickets as possible this weekend. All right, we'll start off the first fight of the night, which should be Konchenko Versailles. And let me preface that by saying these fights get mixed around. You know, up, up until even the day before the fights, um, they get mixed around. Hopefully the order I'm giving you right here is as close as possible to the actual order that the fights should be happening here in this event. So anyway, we're starting off with Sai versus Konchenko. And I look closely at both these, these fighters. Um, there's some weaknesses with both fighters. The biggest weakness for Konchenko is his takedown defense. So in recent fights where he's come up short, the fighters he was going against were able to just take him down strategically at the end of rounds when it really counted. So he lost two fights in a row. He's on a two-fight losing streak. But but consider who he lost those fights to. Um, he lost those fights to uh, Gilbert Burns and, I believe, uh, yes, uh, Zaleski, Dos Santos. So both pretty decent fighters up until that point. Concheco was coming in on a 20, he was on a 20 winning streak, 20 fight winning streak. So he was 20 and 0. He faced Gilbert Burns, lost a decision. He faced Zaleski, lost a decision. Those are two pretty good fighters, not bad decision losses. Now, Sai, on the other hand, took a look at his record, took a look at what he's done. He has no impressive victories at all on his, on his resume. So in terms of his fight resume and, and what he's done, very average fighter. What I, what I saw in his fights, which was a glaring weakness for me, which, which was a real big issue, big red flag, was he doesn't push the pace. Okay, So fighters who tend to have a slower pace fight on their heels. That's, that's a problem if it's going to be a close fight. Now, this fight here, even for the people that are saying, oh, Sai is a potential underdog, he's got good reach, good, good leg kicks, and he does. Very good leg kicks, very good reach. But he doesn't have a high pace. So... Here you have Konchenko coming off of two losses against, you know, a caliber, you know, top level fighters in that division. I think he comes in here, pushes the pace, doesn't have to worry about takedowns because Sai is not really a takedown type of fighter. And that's Konchenko's biggest weakness. I think Konchenko is just busy enough. He lands more strikes. Um, not saying he hurts Sai, but I think the minus 200 here on Konchenko is warranted. I like him. Now, I will say this. I have heard... Plenty of very respectable handicappers this week and other people that host good shows saying they're on Psy. And I had to, like, go back in. I rewatched film. And I came back out thinking the same thing again. I think Psy is a decent fighter, but he doesn't have any big wins in his resume. The dude's 8-5-2. and two. Like, okay, so, you know, just decent record. He lost this weird majority decision to Ray Cooper where it was a draw initially. So he fought Ray Cooper the third, who's also on this card as well. But he fought Ray Cooper... It went to a draw, so but they had to pick someone to move on in the tournament, so they went back to the judges and they asked the judges to look at it again and just sort of like, which fighter do they think kind of won it, but not really using stats? I swear, I swear, if you look back at this fight, look up the Ray Cooper um, fight versus uh, versus uh, Sai. It's just weird. They go back, the judges have to like rethink about it, and then they come back out and they say, okay, we think we think Cooper won. So he lost that in a weird decision, and then he got this no contest I poke um, versus uh, Aleska, Shin, Aleska, Aleska Shin. I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Anyway, the point is, let me wrap this up. It's prelim first fight of the night. I'm running on right now. I like Kachenko. I like to parlay Kachenko. I'm going to parlay Ch Kachenko. So, you know, that's where I'm at. One of my favorite picks of the night. All right, let's move on up to the next fight on the card. That's going to be Tom Lawler versus Jordan Young. And look, Tom Lawler looked at his last fight. He looked old. Now, he is 38, but, you know, 38 is different for certain fighters. For, for Tom Lawler, he's every bit of 38. This plus 275 that's on him right now with Jordan Young favored at minus 400 is totally warranted. The only issue here is, like, do you want to be betting, you know, $400 to make $100? No, not really my cup of tea. Jordan should win the fight. He's got a handful of submissions here in recent fights. So, he's, you know, he's kind of – that's his, that's his strongest way to, to finish a fight, submission. And here Lawler's coming off of being, what, submitted. So as a prop bet, the first prop bet of the night I would look at would be Young by submission. That's probably going to be a better number than Young just winning the fight because he's going to win the fight. Lawler is just very slow. His reaction time is slow. 
um, at 38 years old. He's got a 10 and 8 overall record, so he doesn't have a lot of experience for his age. Unfortunately, this may be one of his last few fights in the UFC. Um, I hate to say it; seems like a nice guy, but Young gets this win. Um, probably finishes the fight. Yeah, I see him submitting Lawler. Lawler's just you know very slow. I think by end of round two, you know, Lawler will have exposed himself. He'll be struggling to try to get some type of momentum. He'll probably give up his back at some point, and Young will execute a submission of some kind. All right, moving on to the the widest margin on the on the on the money line tonight of all the cards, and that's Magomed Magomed Karimov um, versus Curtis Melender. And yet, this dude Magomed has like two last names combined together. No hyphen, though. His last name is is Magomed Karimov. All right, so very traditional type of Russian fighter in that he's coming in with like a very good record, most of it being in the, in the East, in the Far East, and so you're not really sure quality of competition. But, you know, overall, 27 and 5 is 27 and 5. He's a pretty good fighter. Curtis Melender, yeah, he's very average fighter. You know, 18 and 7. He's 1 and 4 in his last five fights. I mean, it, it almost doesn't matter who you fought. If you're one in four in your last five fights, you're coming in clearly with some kind of, you know, you're coming in basically on almost a five-fight losing streak. So things are not going well. Um, I looked at some of his recent fights. wasn't impressive. But let's just back up here for a second. From a betting perspective, what are you really going to do here? Um, just take a really hard look. Do you think Melinda is actually a dog that you want to take? You know, ask yourself that. I'm asking myself that. Do you think that plus... 500 is actually going to work out, you know, against a guy who's, you know, really up and down, a better fighter who's set up here to win. And I, and I, my answer I come back to is pretty much no. So I'd say nine times out of 10, there's just no way Melinda wins the fight. So there's no interest for me as a dogger pass here. I think this is unfortunately a no bet situation with, with Magomed. I think he wins the fight, but again, at minus 910, around minus 1000, you can't even parlay that because if you do parlay it, it doesn't affect your parlay very much. And God forbid something happens, like an injury, right? Some kind of a freak event, you know, it would be it would be it would be um it would be terrible. So yeah, let's move on up here. This is not really a good matchup. Magomed's gonna win the fight. He'll probably finish the fight at some point. If he submits him, hurts him, something of that nature. All right, next fight in the prelims is gonna be Joa Zeffer Zeferino versus Jason Pone. And Here's another big, big margin here, minus 400, Zeferino um, over Panay, which is pl who's plus 275. Watch film on these two fighters, and I guess it's warranted. I'm on Zeferino. I think Zeferino's going to win the fight. Not sure how, meaning that, um, you know, I could see Zeferino just getting a decision, you know, just grappling, get a decision, clinching, and, and just winning in that method. Just looking at Panay, that's where the that's where you feel more confident when you start looking at Zeferino as a pick. When you look at Pone, very just, you know, very underwhelming fighter. Um, doesn't have any, you know, big time wins on his resume. Um, you know, just very underwhelming in general. Uh, you know, not a 50-50 fighter, but he he is 20 and 13. Um, 32 years old, fought a lot of people. Just yeah, I, I came away watching his his film and also thinking, you know. His his takedown defense isn't great. He tends to be you know, against someone who has a slower pace, fights on his heels. I don't like that. If I'm looking at a fighter, let, let's just say this is a 50-50 fight, and Zeferino and him were just 50-50 fighters, which it's not. I believe Zeferino is just significantly a better fighter, okay? But if it was a 50-50 fight and you got one guy like Pone who, who's going to be backing up and being tentative and not being able to push the pace, no, not my style. I, I can't really back that. I wouldn't want to back that. I, I'm, I'm sweating that. At plus 275, there's no value there as a dog. Zephyrin gets the win. Not sure how. Don't have any real prop bet advice here on this fight other than the fact that Zephyrin wins. And I do like Zephyrin winning a lot, so I would parlay Zephyrin. I will parlay Zephyrin this weekend. So, Or I'll, I'll parlay Zephyrin this Thursday along with maybe some other stuff, maybe some baseball or basketball. But Anyway, all right, next fight up on the prelims is going to be this one right here is a steal. This is probably your... It's not just me. You're going to hear this from a lot of handicappers is that the Hamlet fight, Hamlet versus Hendricks. When you first look at it, you're like, okay, Hamlet's 7-1 and one, and Hendricks is 7-3 and three, and, you know, Hamlet's 29, Hendricks is 33. Like, a lot of similarities. And that was the first thing before looking at any film. 
I had never I had never seen them fight before I watched their film and, and studied the fight. Um, initially, I thought it was going to be an even. I saw minus 200 for Hamlet, so maybe there's a reason why he's favored. Once you start watching the film, Hamlet is by far a, a stronger, more more stronger, powerful fighter in the clinch, which is where he likes to work. Hendricks is not a bad fighter. Like, he's okay. He's a decent prospect. You know, he's 33. Well, prospect 33. He's getting a little bit older, right? But when you look at their actual clinch game, their power dynamic, Hamlet's going to have a big advantage there. He likes to work in, in tight. He likes to get guys on the ground. He likes to ground and pound dudes. Um, this minus 200 here is probably going to swell to, like, minus 250 by, by, by fight time because – once the word gets around that Hamlet is clearly the better fighter, this minus 200 here is a bargain. So straight up bet for sure. And then um, parlay piece. Now, can Hamlet finish him? Maybe he can. Maybe he could submit him. But Hendricks is not bad. I wouldn't be shocked at all. All three rounds go by. Hamlet spends, spends a good deal of time on the ground on top of Hendricks, you know, gaining position. And the fight ends that way. and He gets a decision. But it's going to be a comfortable decision. No sweat. Um, so yeah, you know, maybe Hamlet by decision, like goes a distance. That's, that could be sexy, but otherwise I'm just taking Hamlet straight up. This is nice and easy. Minus 200. Take that. So let's move on here to the last fight of the prelim. And that's going to be Antonio Carlos Jr. Versus M Vinny Magalhaes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Vinny Magalhaes. So this fight right here, the first thing that, uh, kind of pops out here is, is it Vinny? Vinny's the guy who hasn't fought like in a minute um, in terms of like UFC or MMA. I'm sorry. Yeah. So Vinny's been fighting grappling <laughs> and like I'm, I'm this is this is funny. I shouldn't I shouldn't laugh. But of his last one, two, three, four, five, six, like last six bouts, five of them have been grappling bouts. So like just, you know, like basically BJJ bouts like there's no striking. You're just working on position control. Trying to get a submission to end the fight, but overall position, position control win the, can win the fight as well after whatever three or four rounds, whatever they do in gra no grappling events. So he lost like every basically every one, two, <laughs> three, four. He's lost four, five out of his last five grappling bouts. So he's, he's, he stinks at that. And his last UFC fight was against Rashid y Yusupov back in 2019. And he lost that fight because he got knocked out. Like you know, so like I'm not kidding. If you look at his recent fight history, it's just L's, L's in grappling. It's L's in, in MMA. So like I don't know where they got this dude <laughs> to come and fight. He's a plus one ninety five, and like yeah, there's I got some serious questions about his abil his ability. Now here's the other side of this. So I'm gonna flip complete gears and give you a reason why you might want to consider him as a dog, right? Well, let me give you my pick first. I'm on Junior to win the fight, but I'm not betting. And I, that you, if you know me and you know MMA Fight Club, we're strictly degenerates. We bet on every single fight. This one, no, no. No, no. Because I think Junior should win. Junior has, you know, has, has coming in here a little bit of momentum. <laughs> okay? You know, like a little bit. Let me see. Where, where's Junior's uh, numbers at? Cause I, Junior's 11 and 5 overall. Right, but what, what's what's nice about Junior is he's coming in here on a win over Tom Lawler. Which, let me rephrase that: Tom Lawler looks old. That was like whatever. Before that, he lost three, three straight fights. So so he come he came in here pretty much. Lawler just wiped that out of the way. He's coming here pretty much last three fights he lost, which is Brad Tavares, Uriah Hall, and Ian Heinish. Heinish, eh, whatever. Uriah Hall, okay. Brad Tavares, okay. They were all decisions. Uriah Hall was a split decision. So. Yeah, you know, I feel like Junior's like an okay fighter. He's a middling okay average fighter. He's decent. Probably gets the win here over Vinny, right? Because Vinny, Vinny can't win anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at his ra look, go look at the tapology for Vinny. I mean, I don't even know how they they rack up the records because he's supposed to be 19 and 12, but that's his like MMA record, right? Like his overall fight record is just jacked. Um, yeah. Junior should win the fight. Minus 265? No, no. Um, but way too much. And when I watched Vinny's film, here's the last thought on this, right? So let me let me go here to my notes. Yeah, so I watched the film, and I watched him fight against... Um, yeah, I watched him fight against Yusupov, 
And then I also went back, way back to see him fight against Cleveland. What was interesting about him watching him fight was like he's a, actually a decent looking striker. Like he's got, he's landing his feet, he's kicking, he's striking. He looks like he's okay. Um, but then, <laughs> then he gets knocked out by, by Yusupov in the first round. So like maybe he's got no chin. I don't know. Listen, this is a bad one. It's the, it's the, it's the final fight of the prelims. Again, if you want to bet, like I would say, put your money on Junior. I, I can't find a way to bet in this fight. This one's really quirky. I feel like, well, like, what it, <laughs> okay, I'm just going to post this. What if Vinny comes in here and, like, dude's, like, completely different fighter? Like, I don't know. Maybe, you know, he's he's only, he's 36. I don't know. I, it's just weird. I'm not I'm not high on Junior. Junior just beat, you know, again, you know, he, he beat um, uh, Lawler, who just, that just doesn't mean much. Before that, he lost three fights in a row. So, yeah, whatever. All right, let's move on here to the main card. Um, and what I have for now as the main card, right? What I have right now in the moment, and hopefully this is not going to change, is Cesar Ferreira versus Chris Camozzi. And I'll make this short and sweet. Ferreira's minus 345. Got Ferreira to win the fight. He's 14 and 8. Camozzi's 25 and 15. Uh, one and four in his last you know, five fights. Um, Camozzi's got some chin issues. A little worried about that. Just feel like Ferreira right now, right now with. with you know, just his momentum, um, you know, his his just just is his production right now is going up, whereas Camozzi is not, maybe not necessarily going down. Um, but you know, Cesar Ferreira right now, you know, he's coming in here after beating Real Quick in his last fight, and if you look at his last two losses, again, he, who does he lose to? Marvin Vittori, Ian Heinish, you know, not so bad. You know, like so he's fought some decent competition. He did go the full distance with Vittori, which. Vittori is a decision type of guy anyway. He does go to distance weapon. But anyway, the point is he went with decision with Vittori. Then he went and beat Nick Ro Rorick. Um, and he beat him in the first round, so that's a nice win. Um, I just think Ferreira is just an overall better fighter, and I really question Camosi's chin. I feel like Camosi is the kind of guy, like, he wants to do it. He moves forward. He tries to push the pace. You know, he wants to make contact. Like, in his brain, he's making, you know, he's making strategic right directional moves. Just slow, like... Can't counter fast enough. You know, he's he's second, you know, he's second to the party. You know, his, his jab is slow. And I feel like here Ferreira, you know, just has the athletic advantage. Um, I think he has the momentum too. I just think he's hungrier, stronger. You know, in terms of age difference, I mean, there is really none because Ferreira's 36 and Camos is 34. They're both at a point where, you know, they know that next four or five years, you know, it, it's over. Um, if Ferreira decides to take Camozzi to the ground, which, you know, I don't know if that's what he's going to do. I, th I think he can keep it on the feet and probably just do that. But if he does, Camozzi's ground defense is just not. There's nothing there. He can't defend the ground game. He can't defend takedowns. So, you know, Ferreira's jacked. He's a strong dude. Um, anyway, minus 345. I don't like betting this fight. For me, again, there's not a lot of value. Minus 345, even in a parlay. Eh. Don't love it, but I am on Ferrer to win the fight, so wouldn't recommend here betting though either way because I'm not I don't think Camozzi's got any value and I think Ferrer at minus three forty five is maybe a little bit too high. Just, you know, what if something happens? Again, injuries, right? Injury injury can happen and I just don't feel super confident from that but he should win. He should win. All right, next fight up. Let's move on to um next fight in the card, and that is gonna be Emilia Emiliano Sordi versus Dan. Spawn. Okay. So minus 400 for Sorty is probably too high. That is probably too high. And then, you know, Spawn's at plus 275. So again, it, this is like identical to the Ferreira Camozzi fight. Sorty's going to win the fight. I'm on Sorty to win. That's what I'm choosing to win. If you want to parlay that piece, do it. Do it knowing, you know, full disclosure, anything can happen, injuries, whatever. It just seems to – that's the problem with the PFL and Bellator events, right, is the numbers just are just like – they're just jacked, man. They're just juiced. They're so high. For for UFC, and I'm thankful for that, UFC typically look up and down the card. It's more – you know, it's in within range. You know, minus 275, minus 300 would be like a big, you know, a big uh, favorite on a UFC card. Whereas on this card, you know, you got, you know, Magomedov, like not almost 1,000. You know, you've got Zeferino, minus 400. Young, minus 400. 
So that gets a little bit annoying, especially when you're not like 100% confident what you're going to get. It's PFL fighters. It's Bellator fighters. You just don't know. Here, Sorty should win. Like, Sorty, last fight or two was meh, okay. But the big advantage that Sorty has is he's been in there with some better fighters than Spawn. Okay. Um, what I really don't like about Spawn is here's a fighter that, you know, he's 18 and 6, right? But let me pull up his tapology real quick here. Yeah. He's coming in here on a three fight losing streak. You know, that's never a good thing. <laughs> that's just never a good thing. And, and the fighters he lost to were. Nielsen, which we, we talked about earlier, pretty legit fighter. Um, Atev and Sean O'Connell. So, you know, not terrible fighters, but, you know, losing is a habit. Um, don't love that. I think Sorty, he's six years younger. He's 23 and eight. You know, think about that. They both have the same amount of losses. They both have eight losses, but one guy's got 23 wins and one guy's 18 wins. One guy, Sorty's coming in here 5 and 0 oh in his last five fights. The other guy's coming in here 2 and 3. So, you don't have to think too hard about this. If you're looking to make a bet, Sorty would be the bet to make. But again, let's look at it from the basic standpoint. If you're making a straight up bet, minus 400, a $400 bet for you to win $100, like, is that a good bet? Nah, nah it really isn't. Hey, do you want to put $100 on, on, on Spawn when you know he's probably going to lose? Nah, it's probably not a good idea either. Um, do you want to parlay Sorty? No, no. So, like, it's tough. A lot of this card, and I hate to put it like that, because, again, I'm, I'm the first one to line up and bet. I, I do enjoy betting on every single fight because when I watch the fight, I may have my, like, personal – the person I want to win, right? But I like to have some skin in the game. We all do. We all want to sweat a little bit. We all want to – or we all want to think we know what the hell we're talking about. So it's there's a lot of no here on this card. There's a lot of just pass, you know. Here's what we think is going to win, but pass. So – Sorry to win, but passing it from a betting standpoint. All right, so next fight. Now, this one right here may be, or is for sure, one of the toughest ones to figure out on the card as to, like, who we think is going to win, how it's going to happen. Um, it's tough. I went back and forth, and I ended up landing on, like, a 50-50 situation here. I know it's gonna. that sounds so weak, right? I'm here to give you my picks and give you the prediction and where to put your money at, but... Okay, so here's here's how this can work out. There's two different ways it can work out in terms of here's how Alex Sakin, what's his first name here? Let, let me let me pull up his damn first name because I can't be calling him. I sound like I was trying to pronounce some name that just Nikolai. Okay, so the Russian Nikolai, who's twenty six and five, right? He's fighting Cooper the third. Okay, and uh, let me pull up Cooper Ray Cooper the third. So. I watched Cooper fight, and, and look, I like Cooper. I especially like the fact that he's like a got a wrestling, you know, at, at base, right? Uh, excuse me, got an itch. He's got a wrestling base. Um, he goes to it. He knows it's one of his fundamental, like you know, he's it's his go-to, it's his home base for whenever things get tight. He can start wrestling guys. I've also seen him get tired, though. Okay, um, I've also seen him leave, see him leave himself open on his feet where he could be hit and countered. Um, not great. You know, I, I don't love that. Okay, his path to victory, Cooper's path to victory, is going to be takedowns at critical moments. So let's say the first round comes out, it's even. You get to about thirty, forty-five seconds left in the round. Cooper comes in, gets a takedown, keeps ground position, wins the round on that method. That's his path to victory. I think if he does that, he won the fight. If he does, if, if specifically if he does in the first round and third round, so like let's say in round one, he comes out, fights an even round with Nikolai. They're back and forth, no one's hurt, and then he goes in, takes him down. Nikolai does not like ground game. He's been on the record and said, "I don't like being on the ground. I don't like fighting on the ground. That's just not where he wants to be at." Now on his feet, he's busy, he's athletic. Like on his feet, he's faster, he's quicker, he's more athletic, has more tools than Cooper on his feet. Cooper is, you know, Samoan, Hawaiian, thick, you know, wrestler, wants to grab you, use his power, lift you up, slam you on the ground if you can, right? He'll try all that on Nikolai. So Nikolai's going to have to, well, he knows this. Nikolai's coming in here. Obviously, they prepare for this fight. He's got to defend against a takedown, keep the guy off of him, keep Cooper off of him. But if Cooper gets a hold of him, what could end up happening here? I, I, I do think this fight goes a distance. So I think this fight is going to be over. 
goes to distance, goes to decision. And so if you're betting either guy, I would look at by decision as a, as a nice prop bet. I'm going on – I'm going to Cooper to win the fight. I'm going to say it. I was so torn back and forth. It's, it's a pick and fight. They're both like minus 120, minus 105. I think Cooper is going to crowd him and then take Nikolai down. And then once they're on the ground, it's going to be that boring you know, position control thing. Nobody gets hurt. Both guys at the end of the fight probably have no facial damage. Cooper, if he's smart, uses, uses wrestling and wins the fight that way. That's what I see happening. Now, if you're on Nikola and you think he's going to win the fight, it happens this way. He's able to defend the takedown. So, like, maybe not every round. So, maybe he loses one round where it's like he, he defends a takedown, mess, makes, a, makes a mistake, overreaches, overpunches, gets taken down. Okay. Loses that round. But the other two rounds, he pieces up. Cooper keeps a distance, gets the points, keeps on his feet. We're all good. I'd say third round, though, is crucial, though. I feel like whoever wins the third round will probably win the fight. So, like, I can see one guy winning the first two rounds, but then the other guy winning the third round, they give it to that guy because, you know, the judges are. They're just – they have no memory of the first two rounds. They, they can't even remember who won the first round. So, third round would be huge here. It goes a distance, and – yeah, I, I can't believe I'm fading the Russian. I said to myself that last week. I said, don't fade the Russian fighters. But when I heard that Nikolai does not like to be on the ground, I said to myself, Jesus, you know, I, how can I not think that Cooper has a, a, a direct path there to victory? So, all right, let's move on here to the main event. Let's go here. Let me find uh, my notes. Where am I at? Where am I at here? All right, so the main event is going to feature – I'm sorry. Bear with me here. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, McDonald and Tabah. So Rory McDonald and Gleason Tabah, this is unfortunately going to be a very boring main event. Um, Rory McDonald is a much better fighter. The Canadian is – you know, he's got – the biggest thing he has, he has cardio. And if you've watched any of Gleason Tabal's recent fights, he doesn't have cardio. He's 37, fights like he's 57. <laughs> he's slow. I haven't watched him fight, let's say, maybe 10 years ago, whatever he might have. He, like, the dude's 34 and 15, so he's, he's fought, you know, literally about, you know, 50 fights. Um, but I didn't watch his fights 10 years ago. Maybe he was a little quicker then. But right now, if you watch his recent fights, quickness is not... You, something you could like make a drastic improvement on, even if you're a younger fighter. It's usually inherent to your, you know, body type, your, you know, your physique, your biology. You know, especially like quickness in your strikes, your ability to like defend, move, right? Um, like that's why heavyweights tend to be slower because it's the physique, dynamics, right? Biology, bigger person. So, here's my point. He's very slow right now at this point in his career. He doesn't have the ability to even have basic head movement. So jabbing him will be easy for Rory. Um, straight kicks will be easy for Rory. The only path to victory for Gleason uh, to bow would be somehow clinching him up and making it <clears throat> ugly. But it is a five-round fight, and Gleason doesn't have very good cardio. So this should be a walk in the part for Rory McDonald. The minus 560 suggests it's going to be a walk in the part park for him. Um Again, this is a problem from a betting perspective, though, because I don't see any way that Tabal wins the fight. McDonald's definitely going to win the fight. It's a matter of does he get a decision, like a lopsided four to one, five, to, you know, I mean four to one, meaning like four rounds to not to one, or even five rounds to nothing decision. If he goes the distance, this might be one of the biggest margins of victory on a decision paper of any fight in recent history. So. The other method could be that McDonald just gets on top of, you know, Tabal. Tabal just gets exhausted. You know, he kind of just gives up and eventually just – not just – not taps out per se, but just basically, basically just gives up and takes so many punches. He's got his hands in his head. The referee calls the fight because, you know, Rory's just hitting him. Now, I will say this, and I want this to be really clear. I want to be on the record about this. I don't think that Rory McDonald is, like, top-tier fighter by any means. Like, this is a main card here for PFL. And Rory is a big favorite at minus 560. But he has holes in his game, okay? <clears throat> and let me just, let me give you, like, a, for example, a little hint here. Okay, so he's coming in here. He beat Curtis Melander the last fight, which is a nice win, first round, rear naked choke. 
But his prior fight, he lost to Douglas Lima. And Lima's like, ugh, you know, he's okay. Two fights before that, he lost to Musasi. Earlier before that, he lost to Stephen Thompson, Robbie Lawler. Like, he's lost literally about half of his recent six or seven fights. It's not like he's coming in here like on a seven or eight fight losing streak. He even has a draw in there against John Fitch. So, all I'm saying is that Rory McDonald at minus 560, if if you're betting, let's say, the house on him, right, you're like, that's easy money, it's the main event, it's minus 560, Vegas knows what they're doing, I would steer clear of that. Sometimes when a fighter is, like, favored, like, I'm going to look back at this entire card. Let me, like, okay, look at look at the Hamlet guy, right? So, minus 200 is Hamlet, Nielsen Hamlet over Hendricks. I do believe there at minus 200, you could be very aggressive. Like, that minus 200 has a lot of value. I think he wins. A lot of, a lot of ways he could win the fight. More durable. Could just just all, all the arrows point towards him winning. You know, so that's a good but, – but minus 560, it's just – could McDonald lose this fight in some weird fashion where Tabal, like, like first round, he just cracks Rory and catches him off, the, off guard? I, yeah, it's hard to believe that could happen, but yeah, but it could, but it could. So, anyway, let me just recap here for PFL number five. Um, you know, I want to apologize in advance. Just not a lot of positions here I like. I'll put all the bets up as usual um, on Twitter and whatever else as to who we pick and who we're going with. But uh, yeah, you got to be cautious here. You know, this is you know it's PFL, Bell- PFL and Bellator both. Gets a little squirmy, and these big, you know, these big spreads here, and these big margins of victory get a little scary. So, anyway, just to recap here, uh, going for the prelims, we've got um, Konchenko over Sai, and we really like Konchenko a lot, minus 200 as an individual pick, and also as a parlay piece. We've got Young over Lawler, minus 400, not a great bet, way too big. Uh, Magomed Karamov over Melander, again, minus 900, not a great bet situation, but we've got Magomed Magomed Karamov winning over Melander. Uh, next piece is uh, Zephyrino versus uh, Pone. We've got Zephyrino winning over Pone. We really like Zephyrino winning. So if you want to parlay that Zephyrino at minus 400, yeah, go for it. We like him winning over Pone. Just Pone just doesn't have the skill level to keep up with uh, Zephyrino. Uh, Nielsen Hamlet over Kendrick. So Nielsen Hamlet is hyphenated last name. So if it's Nielsen on your betting sheet or if it's Hamlet, um, whatever name you got him by, we, we have him as our second favorite pick of the fight, of the fight card, equal to Kachenko, if not even more. We really like Hamlet. At minus 200 over Hendricks, that's a really great value. Um, straight up is nice. If you want to put, like, three or four units on Hamlet, do it. Um, do it, and don't don't kill me later if it doesn't work out. Uh, no, it's going to be fine. I like Hamlet a lot. like Hamlet as a parlay piece, too. I've got him parlay with a bunch of Major League Baseball, basketball, way too much shit, so... If he falls apart, ah, I'll be screaming. But anyway, I like Hamlet. All right, let's move on to the last fight, the prelims. That's Junior. Uh, we, we're taking Junior over Vinny Magalajas. Um, just the experience, minus 265. Not betting that fight. That's the one if you heard earlier in the, in the prediction show. Just feeling ugh, not, not great there. But we got Junior winning the fight. Main card, we've got Ferreira beating Camozzi. Sorty beating Spawn. Um, we've got Cooper beating the Russian. Uh, Nikolai Alesakin. And in the main event, we've got Rory beating Tabao. So there you go. That's PFL number five coming up on Thursday here, um, you know, June the 17th. If you're going to do what we're doing, which is going to be very cautious and maybe only take a few pieces, like I'm, I'm probably looking only to bet the Hamlet fight, Zephyrino fight, and Kachenko fight, like with confidence in terms of, I like the numbers. I like that minus 200 for Kachenko. I like the the minus 200 for Hamlet and the minus 400 for Zafrino, whatever, just as a parlay piece. But, you know, everything else is just kind of very, very big and very wide. The Cooper fight is a 50-50 fight, so kind of tough there. But I'll put all the bets up in our usual spots on Twitter, on the on our on our Betty Handicapping website. So I don't know if you guys know, but I will say this right here because I've, I've put it in the description as well, so you have it. But um, betmatips.com. Um, that website, betmatips.com, they have like a list of all the different betting scenarios that other handicappers are putting up. And it's like a running record. So it's 
Like I'll put my bets up there for the for last week's fights for PFL or or UFC whatever. But once it's there, I can't delete it. It is what it is, and they require you to put your bets up in advance of the event. So I'll put all the betting scenarios up that I'm going to go with here for PFL and for UFC this week and every week moving forward. But if you go up there and you follow our our actual profile and it's in the link in the description on betmatips.com, you'll see exactly who we're picking, and it's a running record of how we're doing. There's no cheating. I can't change it. I can't, you know, if I lose, I lose. Um, if it's a positive or negative weekend or negative event, you can see it all right there. So I encourage you to, you know, hit that link in the description. You know, follow us there on betmatips.com. We also place our information on on our on our Facebook page and also on our our Twitter account, so you can sort of see what we're doing. And if we lose, we lose. We do not delete it. You have a running record of how we've done. So. Anyway, that's PFL number five. Uh, hopefully, it's helpful for you guys. Um, enjoy the events. Make sure you get ready early, though. It's a 5.30 start time. And if you're in the East Coast, Northeast, like we are, maybe you're going to the event. So have a blast. Enjoy it. Um, and, uh, and best of luck on your, on your betting slips.